Hello all, I am Prashant from 100score.org and I am going to be your instructor for today and today's topic for tutorial is going to be Euclid Division Theorem. So let's say, let's go ahead and see what exactly this theorem states. This theorem states that for any two given number A and B, there exists a set of unique numbers Q and R in such a way a is equal to b times q plus r and a is greater than b also r is greater than equal to 0 and r is less than b so this is what the euclid division theorem states don't get too much worried or scared with these equations this is pretty simple and once we solve couple of problems you will come to know that this is a very very simple theorem so let's take a closer look of this equation and see what it exactly it means so if you take a closer look, look of this equation and you will find that this is nothing but our division theorem so what you are doing is you are dividing a by b and q is your quotient and r is equal to your remainder so this is nothing but our division theorem or division equation so let's go and take a couple of examples to prove that every number can be represented in this format so let's take uh, let's take any two numbers let's take uh, let's take 14 and uh, 3 so the first step in this is going to go find out what is a and what is b so as per the theorem a has to be greater than b so you are going to assign a is equal to 14 and b is equal to 3. Now the next step for you is going to find out what is q and also what is r. So you will start dividing to find q and r you are going to start dividing a by b. So let's say let's start dividing. So 14 will come inside, 3 is going to be outside and 3 4s are 3 4s are is going to be 12 and you sub 12 and you subtract 14 and 12 to get the remainder as 2 so as per the theorem r has to be less than b so this will become your r this is going to be your quotient so r is less than since r is less than 3 so since r 3 is greater than 2 and r r which is which is 2 is less than 3 so you're going to stop the division over here so let's start since we got all the numbers you have got your quotient as 4 your remainder as 3 2 so let's start putting these numbers into our equation so our equation says that a is equal to b times q plus r so what's going to be a b q and r so a is already given in your quotient which is 14 b is nothing but your number 3 which is already given in your equation or uh, which is already given in the question 3 and what is going to be q q is nothing but this 4 because this this 4 is nothing but the quotient and r is going to be nothing but 2 which is going to be a remainder so now your equation becomes like this and which if you find out this is nothing but your Euclid division theorem. So as I said that all two numbers, any two numbers can be represented in this format. Uh, I went over this pretty quickly. People, this, at least this division, people who don't know having are having a problem or don't know the division, do email me. Uh, I would try to take a one session on the basic division also. So let's take an, another example to show you that all the other numbers also can be represented in this format. So let's take an example of a big number. Let's say, let's take 117 and um, let's say 15. So now first step is to write down the equation. What exactly you are looking for? So you need to represent A in terms of B times Q plus R. So first step is to get A and B and assign. So first step is to identify A and B and assign them values so as per the theorem a has to be greater than b so out of 117 and 15 
we are going to assign a as 117 because 117 is greater than 15 b is going to be 15 and now the next step is going to be the variables we are going to find out q and also r so how we are going to do that we are going to use our euclid division theorem so let's start dividing now so a is going to be since it's greater is going to become in will be coming inside 15 is going to come outside and let's start dividing so in division we are going to find the closest multiple of 15 which is less than one which is less than or equal to 117 so what would be the answer so what we are going to do is we are going to multiply let's try 15 multiplied by 7 15 multiplied by 7 is 105 and let's try 15 multiplied by 8 15 multiplied by 8 is 120 so which one you are going to choose you are going to choose 15 multiplied by 7 which is 105 over 120 because 120 is greater than 117 this is a basic principle of division i'm not going to go over with that today but definitely i'll take some other session to go over with this so coming back to the problem 15 multiplied by 7 so 7 is going to come here now 105 is going to come here now to find the remainder you are going to subtract 117 with 105 which is going to be 12 so since 12 is less than 15 you are going to stop division so let's start and put all the numbers all the numbers which we got in our equation uh, here a is going to be 117 b is 15 Th these numbers are, are coming from your questions because in, in the question it's given for 117 and 15 and q is going and q is going to be this number 7 and R is going to be 12 which is coming from here okay so let's start putting this in an equation so you are going to put a is equal to 117 B is equal to 15 times which is Q Q Q is going to be 7 plus R what's going to be R R we just found out that is 12 so we did put this equation all all these numbers in an equation which represent Euclid division theorem so one, one step also you can do it you can go ahead and verify if all these numbers which you got are correct you can do left hand side if matches you can say that if your left hand side matches right hand side then whatever numbers you got are correct so left hand side is your 117 and right hand side is 15 multiplied by 7 is going to be 105 plus 12 which is going to be 117 so your left right hand side matches left hand side so whatever numbers you got 7 and 12 are in fact correct so well we just proved that all the numbers all the any two numbers can be represented in this format and this is nothing but our plain old division you are dividing a by b and you are trying to get uh, you're dividing a by b and you're trying to get quotient and remainder okay so let me go ahead and take one more example so let's take another example so another example let's take a number let's say take the number 67 and uh, let's take another number 17 so that we definitely going to get a remainder out of it so first step is to write the equation so a is equal to b times q plus r so what is a now a would be greater of these two as per the theorem so we are going to assign a 67 as a b is going to be 17 we have to find we are asked to find q and also r so let's start dividing so 17 will come outside 67 will come inside we need to find the closest multiple of 17 less than 67 so which is going to be let's try 3 17 times 3 is 51 let's try one more 17 times 4 is going to be 8 to 68 so okay so 68 is greater than 67 so we are not going to use this one we are going to use this one so 17 times 3 is 51 
okay so to get the remainder you're going to subtract these two terms so it's 67 minus 51 is going to be 16 so since 16 is less than 17 you're going to stop your division over here uh, yeah so let's start equating our numbers into our equation so we got we just got a is equal to 17 oh sorry a is going to be 67 b is going to be 17 as per the question so a and b are nothing but a is equal to 67 b is going to be 17 as per the equation or as per the question and we were asked to find q so what's going to be what, what is the value of q q is nothing but this this guy which is 3 so well let's put 3 over here and r is going to be nothing but the remainder which is going to be this guy which is 16 so let's put 16 over here and now let's start representing in our equation so it says that a is equal to b times q plus r you just found out that a is equal to 67 because it's given in the question b is going to be 17 from here which is also given in the question and you found that in this division q and r so q is going to be 3 so times 3 plus r is going to be 16 which you just found out from here so this is going to be our euclid division theorem and also you can verify it also that left hand side is equal to right hand side 67 is equal to 17 times 3 is 51 plus 16 which is going to be 67 so your right hand side equal to left hand side so all these numbers which you found are correct so let me take one more example where i'll show you the remainder is zero okay so let's take uh, 10 and 2 so it what, what, what let's start assigning the values first step is to find a and b and start assigning the values so a would be 10 because 10 is greater than 2 b is going to be 2 and we were asked to find q and also r okay so let's start dividing you're going to give 2 and you're going to be 10 is going to come here the nearest number would be 2 times 5 it's going to be 10 and you're going to get 0 so since 0 is less than 2 you're going to stop the division over here so how can you now represent so a is already given in the th given in the quotient is equal to 10 b is already given in the quotient which is going to be 2 so what's going to be your q q is always going to be this guy so this is nothing but 5 and r is going to be your remainder which is this guy so r is going to be 0 so let's start representing in our Euclid division theorem or a Euclid di division equation so a, it says that a is equal to a is equal to b times q plus r so a is going to be 10 plus b is oh sorry is equal to b is going to be 2 multiplied by multiplied by q so q is nothing but you just found out is 5 plus r r is nothing but 0 so look you can represent any two numbers in this format so we well we just proved that proved our theorem with all the all the examples so euclid division theorem is nothing but division you are dividing a by b to get quotient and the remainder so I'm going to end this session with this problem and also you can go to our website 100score.org and try to solve a couple of uh, quiz. I did put up some quiz questions on our website so you can go ahead and take the quiz and track your performance. We are going to go over the quiz questions in next session and also will tell you the importance of this theorem. This theorem can be used to find HCF and GCD. We are going to cover this HCF and GCD in next session after the after solving the quiz questions. Okay, so that's it for now. I'm going to wrap up our session now. Thanks and bye.